So we're at Aldi and I'm gonna be doing my shopping for the week. I'm gonna spend around 50 or $60. I have a couple staples I need to get, but mainly I need to use the rest of the meat that's in my freezer before I do a budget-friendly meal plan next week. So that's what I'm gonna to do today is just get some odds and ends and things for me to be able to use all the stuff that we have on hand. So let's get shopping. Here is everything we're getting today and we're spending $53.44. So I have my meal planner here. It's linked in the description for you if you wanna take a look, but I always write down all my groceries, my full meal plan for the week and it kind of keeps me um, focused on what I need to buy and so I don't overbuy. So this week I have um, chicken and, and spatzel, spatzel and zucchini from the garden. I want to make a pumpkin loaf for breakfast this week and some sweet and sour meatballs with rice. Maybe a tikka masala or a butter chicken or something like that with some homemade naan and some rice and then I have frozen pizza so we'll be doing that um, this weekend then probably a day of maybe some leftovers and then a grilled chicken and veggies and then the last um, couple days will be to be determined so that's the plan for this week so let's see what we can make this first recipe is a chicken stuffed pita pocket and this is actually my first time trying to make pita pockets from scratch. I normally just buy them, but first I just mixed together some warm water, sugar, and yeast in a bowl, let that set until it was nice and foamy, about 10 minutes. Then in a separate bowl, I mixed together flour and salt and then added the yeast mixture. And I just kneaded that with a fork for about six minutes, but next time I'm probably gonna use my stand mixer. Then I placed the dough in an oil bowl and tossed it in oil just to make sure it was covered and then covered it with some plastic wrap and a towel until it doubled in size. That took about an hour in my kitchen. Then I just pulled it away from the edges to sort of deflate it and I just took about eight even-ish balls off of the dough into the flour and then put that on a tray to rest for another 30 to 45 minutes until it doubled in size again. Then I heated a nonstick skillet and added the dough, covered it with a lid, then browned it for about three minutes on one side. And then once that was browned, I flipped it and browned it on the other. I set those aside so I could make the chicken and vegetables. Now in a large bowl, I added some olive oil, minced garlic, some lime juice, because that's all I had, but I'll use lemon next time, I think. Then just some salt and pepper and a couple other seasonings that I'll list down below, and then added my veggies. All I had on hand was some diced red onions, then some bell peppers from the garden, and added some chopped chicken, and just tossed that until it was completely coated. Then I put that on a parchment-lined baking sheet and baked it for about 25, 30 minutes or so at 425 degrees until it was fully cooked through, and then put those in the pita pockets. Super easy, a little bit of work, but really delicious. This next recipe is a schnitzel, but I'm doing it a little bit different this time. In a small bowl, I added panko breadcrumbs, some dried parsley, minced garlic, and black pepper, and just mixed that up until it was completely combined. I did have a little bit of extra panko breadcrumbs on hand, so I just added those to it just so I wouldn't waste. And for the veggies on the side this time, I actually pulled some bell peppers out of the freezer. These are from my garden. I just didn't have a use for them at the time, so instead of chopping them or prepping them in any way, I just threw them in the freezer in an airtight bag and when I'm ready to use them, I'll just run them under water so that they thaw out just a tiny bit and just chop them just like that. They cut really easily even though they're mostly frozen still. So if you ever need to save bell peppers, you don't have to wait and see if there's some use for them. You can just throw them in the freezer and just use them another time. They taste just like fresh, especially if you're cooking with them, it's super easy. So I just sliced those up and then chopped up an onion and I had one zucchini from the garden. So I grabbed that and cut those into half moons. I put them on a parchment uh, lined baking sheet, added some avocado oil, but you can use olive oil or any oil that you have on hand or no oil if you like and then I added the seasonings so some salt pepper a little bit of oregano and thyme although I did not really love the thyme on this one so next time I think I'll just do either Italian seasoning so it's a little bit more of a blend or maybe just stick to the salt pepper and oregano then I tossed that and added a little bit more seasonings and set that aside while I prepared the chicken so with the chicken I did not have eggs on hand at the time this is one of the meals I made before I went shopping this week so I added some mayonnaise to a small bowl and added some parmesan reggiano because that's what I had on hand but you can use any 
Parmesan cheese or you don't have to use Parmesan at all. It's up to you. And just mix that together. And then I grabbed my chicken, which I thinly sliced in half just to make sure all the pieces were nice and thin and about the same thickness. And then I spread that mayonnaise mixture on top and then added my breadcrumbs on top. Now I tried to make sure that I distributed the breadcrumbs a little bit evenly and patted that with a fork, then grabbed a parchment line baking sheet and turned the chicken over with the breaded side down, then added more mayonnaise on that side and more breadcrumbs as well. Now, if you like, you could spray the top with a little bit of oil, but it's definitely not necessary. I didn't personally do that and it still came out nice and crispy, but that is an option if you'd like to do that. Now, if you don't like mayonnaise, you can definitely just use an egg wash and some flour and then bread the chicken with these breadcrumbs that works as well so it's up to you then I put the veggies and the chicken in the oven at 425 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes until the chicken was cooked through and the veggies were nice and tender then I served it immediately with a side of spatzel that was actually frozen but you could use noodles or rice or anything you like on the side this next recipe is one of my favorites. It's sweet and sour meatballs served on rice with veggies. So first I'm just gonna get some ground turkey. You can use ground beef or any ground meat that you like. Then added some panko breadcrumbs, oregano, salt, pepper, some minced garlic, a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, and two eggs. Now with any of these ingredients, you can certainly add more or less, it's up to you, or you can substitute if there's something here that you don't like. There's a lot of different methods to make meatballs, so just choose your favorite recipe for making these meatballs, and then you can just make the sauce if you like, so that's totally up to you. So I just mashed these and then mix it all together so it's nicely combined, and then I started to make my sauce before I rolled all my meatballs out. So this is just gonna be some brown sugar, some apple cider vinegar, or any vinegar you have on hand will be fine, some ketchup, and some soy sauce. I added a little bit more ketchup just to make sure we had enough sauce for all the meatballs, but I usually just eyeball it with with this one it doesn't have to be exact now if you have any lime or lemon on hand add a little squeeze of that as well I highly recommend that but it's not required I don't always use it and sometimes I also like to do some diced onions in the sauce as well so that's up to you some modifications if you'd like then I rolled those meatballs and put those on a parchment lined baking sheet then I baked them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes they don't have to be fully cooked through because we will be putting them in the sauce the sauce is on the stove here just simmering away I just simmered that for about 20 minutes it's covered while those meatballs are cooking in the oven. Now I will mention you don't have to use your oven to cook the meatballs. You can do it in the stovetop in a skillet or you can do it in the air fryer. So there's a few different options for cooking the meatballs. Now we're just gonna put those in the sauce and let those simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes, up to an hour. Just make sure you're stirring so it doesn't burn the bottom. And then I just serve this with some plain rice, but you can put anything on the side that you like and some veggies. We just did broccoli and some snap peas. This next recipe is a very simple pumpkin loaf. I like to make this for breakfast or sometimes for snack. So I'm just going to combine my dry ingredients here in a large bowl. I have some flour, salt, baking powder, baking soda, nutmeg, cloves, and cinnamon, and mix that up until it's completely combined. Now, I will say with these ingredients, you can really have a lot of control over how your pumpkin loaf tastes. So if you really like cloves, you can add a little bit more. If you love that cinnamon flavor, you can add more as well. So play with this as you like and see if you can get the really great flavor that you love in a pumpkin loaf. And in another bowl, I'm gonna mix together my eggs, vanilla, white sugar, and brown sugar until that's completely combined. Then I'll add the pumpkin puree. This time I'm gonna add an entire cup of pumpkin puree. Sometimes I add a little less, but I wanted to add a little extra pumpkin flavor. Then some oil. You can also experiment and add less oil if you like. It just may not be as moist. And you can certainly look up some substitutions for using less oil. Or if you don't like eggs, you may be able to use applesauce instead. I do that frequently. Then I'll just add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients mix until combined and then I put it in a loaf pan here that has parchment but you can just grease it with butter if you like and I just bake that for about 45 to 50 minutes at 350 degrees until a toothpick comes out mostly clean then I'll let this rest and completely cool on the counter until I'm ready to slice and I'll just slice this up and freeze it and it's ready for the morning next I'm making a really delicious chicken and quinoa veggie soup this is actually an awesome recipe for any time that you're looking for a fast meal. Now I will say that I am 
prepping the chicken in advance here just because I wanted that chicken broth to be full of flavor and for everything to be really easy later on when I wanted to cook. So in my Instant Pot, I added a bunch of seasonings, some salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, Italian seasoning to my chicken and added a little bit of water. Then I cooked that at high pressure for about 12 minutes and let it natural release until the pin dropped. And then I let it rest for a few minutes and shredded the chicken. I saved a liquid that was on the bottom. I'm gonna be using that in the soup in just a little bit. It's a really delicious chicken broth. So never pour out that broth, it's amazing. Now you could just chop this chicken if you like, but I like to shred it, it's just easier for me. Then when it's time to cook, I'm going to add everything to one pot. So first I'll start with some oil on medium heat and just put those onions and carrots in until they're nice and soft and translucent. It's about four minutes or so. Then I'll add my garlic, saute for a couple seconds more till it's nice and fragrant. Then I'm gonna add that chicken broth and a little bit more water so I'm getting the amount of soup that I want. So it ends up being about six cups of liquid altogether. Then I'll add that shredded chicken and I rinse the quinoa in advance. It's just about a half a cup of quinoa, rinsed it and then drained it and put it in the soup directly. Then I added a little bit of salt, but you can skip that if you like. Love the Italian seasoning in this with a little bit of pepper, gave it a stir. And then I'm just gonna bring that to a boil, reduce the heat and simmer for about 15 minutes and I'll add any other veggies that are fast cooking like zucchini. And I also added some green beans from the garden. And as soon as that quinoa is fully cooked through about five minutes later, I'll just serve that up. If you don't like quinoa, you can definitely use some rice for this recipe. It'll turn out just as delicious. This next recipe is a homemade tomato and red pepper soup. And I made this using tomatoes that I grabbed from my freezer. Again, I did not prep these or core them or do anything. I just put them in a bag and put them straight in the freezer. Now this is a very easy way to peel the tomatoes as well. You just have to run them under some cool water and then pull on the skin and the skin comes right off. Frozen tomatoes are actually pretty simple to work with. And I actually prefer this method over the blanching method for taking the skins off. Then I'm just gonna to put the veggies on a tray just the one red pepper from my garden a few cloves of garlic that are not peeled yet and just a half an onion that I chopped I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil on that you could add some salt and pepper as well and then I put a few of those frozen tomatoes chopped on a tray as well and baked those in the oven until it was nice and roasted and in the meantime I chopped my tomatoes they were still partially frozen but they cut just fine then I took some scraps from the freezer some onion scraps some carrot scraps from the carrots that I just chopped and added some water I'm going to go ahead and make the veggie stock from scratch as well while everything else cooks in the oven so I'm just going to let that simmer while I'm waiting for the veggies to cook through in the oven that took about 45 minutes or so then I took that out and strained the broth so I didn't have any of those scraps in the broth then in a medium pot I heated some oil and sauteed the other half of the onion which I diced with some carrots until that was nice and soft it took about five minutes or so then added those frozen tomatoes that I chopped and let that reduce for about 10 minutes on a simmer then added those roasted vegetables and the veggie stock to that and I just let this simmer for about 30 minutes with a couple of sprigs of basil and some salt and pepper after that I went ahead and removed those basil leaves and used a hand blender to blend it now you could use a regular blender just be careful because it will be hot and it might splatter then serve and enjoy this next recipe is a bonus recipe I'm going to be showing you how to make pumpkin spice syrup at home to make your own coffee or tea drinks so first in a small pot I'm going to add some brown sugar white sugar and some water and bring that to a simmer until it's nice and dissolved then I'll add my ginger cloves cinnamon sticks, nutmeg, and pumpkin puree, and I'll mix it all together until it's nice and combined. Then I'm just gonna simmer that for about 20 minutes until it's a little bit reduced and it turns into that yummy pumpkin syrup. Then I'll just take that off the heat and let it rest for a few minutes, and then I'll put it through a cheesecloth. You could use a fine mesh strainer, but you're still gonna get a little bit more of the spices in the syrup, which is okay. So if you don't have a cheesecloth, you can definitely just use the fine mesh strainer. Just keep in mind it's not going to be as clear of a syrup and that's totally fine. You're just going to get a little bit more of the spices in there. So as you can see it just turns into this really delicious syrup and in order to make a pumpkin spice latte or something like that at home it's actually really easy. Just add a couple teaspoons of the pumpkin spice syrup to the bottom of a mug then brew your coffee straight into the mug after that. Now if you have a milk frother use that to froth the milk but if not you can 
and warm it in the microwave and just not have foam and that's totally fine too. So pour that warmed milk and froth over the top and add some whipped cream. I just made some from scratch. It's just some heavy cream, powdered sugar, and a little bit of vanilla and whip that to soft peaks. And I topped that on top of my coffee drink with some pumpkin spice seasoning and that was it. Super easy and so delicious.